If you have a greenhouse or thinking about buying a greenhouse, today I'm gonna to be talking about shade cloth and five different things that you should consider before purchasing. And that's coming up next. So number one, what is shade cloth? Shade cloth is a piece of fabric that can be used in your gardens or greenhouse to basically protect your vegetables and your plants from too much sunlight. Using shade cloth is also a way to keep your greenhouse cooler in the really hot months of the year. Using shade cloth will reduce the temperature inside your greenhouse because it minimizes the amount of light that's able to pass through. And also in this cold climate, we can use shade cloth to protect our plants and vegetables from cold and also wind. The two most common materials for shade cloth are polyethylene and polypropylene. And I'm gonna go into this a little bit more later in the video. A good quality shade cloth is gonna be made with a UV stabilized resin, which is basically gonna make that water resistant. You want that to be able to hold up to the rain and also your water irrigation systems. So number two, how can shade cloth actually help? So using a shade cloth can actually extend your growing season, it can increase photosynthesis, and it can increase your crop yields. So you might be thinking, well, plants like light and they like heat, isn't more better? Not necessarily. <laughs> So to answer that question, we need to talk about ventilation for a minute. Now we have three vents on the front of our greenhouse. We also roll up the sides like many do, um, but that doesn't quite adequately take care of that heat problem because we're forgetting about the radiant energy from the sun. For a greenhouse to be effective and to really be at the ideal levels, you really need to combine those two things, the shade cloth and a good ventilation system. It's important to realize that photosynthesis takes place between a very specific temperature range, which is 50 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Another area that many might not think about is the excessive exposure to infrared light that can be really damaging to your plants. That can lead to discoloration, uh, stunted growth, and also death of your plant. So that's just one more reason to really consider having a shade cloth. And did you know that most plants only need about 2% of transmitted sunlight for that photosynthesis to take place? Did you know that plants can get sunburned just like you and I? Well, we use sunscreen at different strengths to protect ourselves. Well, the same thing goes for shade cloth. And that leads me to my next question. Number three, what percentage shade cloth should I use? And what does that even mean? The percentage is talking about the density of the shade cloth. You might also see GSM, which refers to grams per square meter. And that translates to the weight of the shade cloth. So the higher the GSM, the thicker the material is gonna be, and also the shade rating. Basically meaning how much sunlight that shade cloth is gonna block. So for instance, a 10% shade cloth is gonna block 10% of the sunlight, opposed to a 90% uh, that's gonna block 90% of the shade cloth. On our homestead, we use 30% uh, on our greenhouse. So if you're wondering what percentage you should use, 40 to 60% is actually recommended by most people, and that covers a wide gamut of plants and vegetables uh, within that range, and you're gonna lower your temperature between 13 and 23 degrees. So just keep in mind that you wanna look on the back of your seed packets to see what type of shade uh, is recommended for that particular plant or vegetable. For instance, uh, ferns and orchids tend to like a higher shade, so like about 75%, compared to heat tolerant plants that would probably prefer between 30 and 40%. So here's a few examples of plants that fit into a variety of different percentage shade cloths. 30% heat tolerant plants such as tomatoes, cucumbers, watermelon, strawberries, and peppers. 40 to 50%, a good choice for most flowering plants, fruits, and vegetables. 60%, sensitive to sunlight, lettuce, greens, and spinach, some herbs like dill, parsley, and cilantro. 75% for ferns and orchids. It can also be used on patios for animals and people. When buying shade cloth, there's a couple things to consider, which leads me to point number four, color. So for gardening and greenhouse use, black and green are the most common. You can also get other colors like red, tan, gray, and there's one called an illuminate, which is wrapped in like a metal uh, fabric. It's specifically used to protect plants against frost and radiation damages and also oxidation. So one thing I found really fascinating about using colored shade cloth is that it can actually change the PAR. PAR stands for photosynthetic active radiation. Now this can actually change the overall growth of a plant. Uh, for example, they did an experiment using lettuce. They used a red shade cloth, green shade cloth, and black. And the red, uh, with these test results, showed that the red shade cloth produced much higher yields, bigger plants, 
thicker stems, longer stems for the lettuce. I thought that was really fascinating. So the study I looked at showed a wide range of shade cloths and the effects that it has on those plants. And I thought it was really interesting. So on to my last and final point, number five, knitted versus woven shade cloth. So let's talk about knitted first. It's gonna have better ventilation. You're not gonna have as much heat buildup for your plants. It's also not going to unravel if you cut it. It's not gonna fray. Um, and it's also easier to install. The other nice thing is it also resists most chemicals. The knitted is made of a polyethylene and it looks like kind of one continuous strand of yarn. Uh, like I said, it's lighter, it's easier to install. It lasts for about seven to 10 years. It also comes in multiple colors. All right, so on to woven. Woven shade cloth is gonna be heavier. It doesn't quite last as long. Uh, it's def definitely better suited for winter months and it's made of a polypropylene. They tend to be about 30% heavier than the knitted and they're also more expensive. It's also only available in black. So let's do a comparison between the two. The woven will unravel if you cut it. The knitted is resistant to the chemicals like we talked about. One thing I forgot to say is that the knitted uh, can also stretch about 3% uh, where the woven can't. Now you're gonna typically find woven more on patios and things like that for people and animals uh, where you're gonna find knitted pretty much standard in the greenhouse industry. So before I end this video, I want to share a couple of rookie mistakes that we made when we first purchased our shade cloth. The first thing that we did wrong was we measured incorrectly. Um, I highly recommend that you look into how to properly install and measure for a shade cloth for your greenhouse. We obviously didn't do that because we got the wrong size. <laughs> uh, the second thing that we did was we install the shade cloth inside the greenhouse. And that's a big no-no. You don't want to do that. We were able to get away with it. I think simply because we're in a colder climate, it worked for us. We were actually get we got pretty good yields last year. I think it was just pure luck, really. But you want to put your shade cloth on the outside of your greenhouse so it doesn't heat your greenhouse up. Where we had it, the sun was able to penetrate through the plastic and heat up the greenhouse. And then really we were just providing a little extra uh, shade for our plants inside. Uh, it really wasn't working to its full potential uh, like it would have if I had it on the outside. So just a couple of mistakes that we made I wanted to share with you. I've actually seen some people ask about where to properly place a shade cloth on Facebook and things like that. So I thought I'd share that with you. We'd like to be an open book and share our mistakes. Uh, we're, you know, we're, we're still learning. And uh, so if we can help you guys avoid that mistake, uh, that makes us feel good. Well, I hope this video was helpful and informative. If you liked it, please let us know in the comments below. Give us a thumbs up. Hey, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing to our channel. It really does help us and we love our subscribers. Um, we think about you guys often. I know it's been a while since we made a video. It's our crazy work schedule. We really honestly don't have any time to make videos anymore and it's killing us. We miss you guys. So we're gonna get out here as often as we can to do that, but bear with us. We're gonna try to get back to a regular schedule as soon as we can, but we wanted to let you know we were thinking of you. We love you. Have a great day.